Welcome back. Sovereignty over the Northwest Passage and other shipping routes were on the mind of the U.S. Secretary of State at the Arctic Council meeting in Finland today. Russia's claim, China's behavior in the region were up for discussion, but Mike Pompeo also questioned the legitimacy of Canada's claim over the Northwest Passage. We recognize that Russia is not the only nation making illegitimate claims. The U.S. has a long contested feud with Canada over sovereign claims through the Northwest Passage. Hmm. All right, let's discuss this and other issues with former Foreign Affairs Minister Peter McKay. He joins us from Toronto. <coughs> Peter, I'm curious, our claim on the Northwest Passage is kind of a, a gentleman's agreement, an international waterway under Canadian sovereignty. Uh, how does that work, and do you think the U.S. is moving to undo that understanding? Well, firstly, I think the Secretary of State uh, is wrong. I think we have a very legitimate claim, albeit one that hasn't been firmly established yet. Uh, there's ongoing discussions, claims being made, uh, information being filed at the UN under the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea. But there is a, a, a mm -hmm. gentleman's agreement, as you alluded to, that goes back to the 1980s, where the Reagan and Mulroney administration did come right. to uh, essentially an agreement that the internal... Canadian Northwest Passage would be respected by the United States of America. And like other countries, there would be permission sought and granted uh, with the United States that uh, passage or unimpeded passage could take place. Uh, because of the opening of waters, because of climate change, because of all that's happening in the Arctic, there is not only the Americans, but the Chinese, the Japanese, the South Koreans, and a whole bunch of other countries that not only want to join the Arctic Council, but they want to transship their goods through these internal waters unimpeded. And Canada has to exert its sovereignty. So it's a very important, very contentious and very timely issue. Yeah, we, uh, you know, right now we got our Northern Rangers still, I think they're using World War II rifles. Uh, don't we need to do more? We absolutely need to do more, Don, and uh, we need to have a functioning deep water refueling port. We need to have uh, more military presence, not just uh, uh, northern <coughs> exercises. And I think that it's, it's well past time that we re-examine some of our NORAD commitments and having some sort of a missile defense, an early warning system, if you will, in the Arctic as, as part of our commitment to the defense of this continent. And I think that this would also go a long way to impressing the Americans and impressing upon them how seriously we, we take Northern sovereignty and the defense of the continent. And so these issues are very interrelated. They're very important, mm -hmm. as is the protection of the fragile ecosystem in the Arctic uh, Canadian archipelago. We, we have to have a greater presence there beyond just the Arctic Rangers and, and beyond just to fly over and the occasional ship that goes through. It's why we need an icebreaker. It's why eventually we really need uh, nuclear submarines, deep water submarines. Hmm. Hmm. I want to ask you, speaking of uh, military defense, uh, Andrew Shears come out and says we should join the U.S. missile defense program. Uh, does that sound like the right move at the right time for you? I think it's the right move. Uh, the timing uh, will be difficult in the run up to an election, to be sure. We haven't even been able to ratify our uh, free trade agreement. Uh, I think this is a discussion that has quietly been going on in a lot of corridors, particularly military corridors, for a long time. And as mentioned, under our NORAD obligations, we are literally leaving the room when these discussions about North Korean missile attacks and others are happening. And so Canada has to modernize. We're beyond sort of the esoteric debate around weapons in space and Star Wars. We have to be serious about defense. And I think that that would also uh, put us in a better place vis-a-vis -vis these negotiations with the United States of America if they saw we were serious about the defense of the, of the Arctic. One thing they're kind of miffed at us about, and it seems like a long time ago since I saw you in the cockpit of an F-35, but military analyst Richard Shimuka has compiled this report on the F-35 procurement and for the McDonald Laurier Institute, and he's warned that the U.S. is warning Canada that it's pursuing a policy that would disadvantage the F-35, and it's demanding Canada reaffirm its status as a partner. I'm just wondering what you make of all this. Well, what I think is happening is that the current Liberal government, who put themselves in a bind, you'll recall, in the last election campaign when they said they were not going to buy the F-35 but have an open competition. And you can't really square that circle because 
Canada, under a previous Liberal government back in the 90s, entered into this partnership with Lockheed Martin for the development of the next generation fighter. And so what we are right. seeing now is Canada hedging on that under the current administration. And uh, Lockheed Martin is saying, well, we may kick you out of the program. And that means you won't be able to bid on future contracts for this plane. Uh, we would have wasted, squandered hundreds of millions of dollars by being in the program thus far. And mm -hmm. it would, again, importantly, Don, put us offside with the Americans because we could potentially then be flying a different plane, not interoperable, not up to the same NORAD standards or NATO standards, uh, for that matter, because all of our major allies will be flying F-35s. So, look, Mia Copa, we didn't get it done, uh, although we tried. But uh, this is the plane that Canada should be buying. It brings the most economic advantage, and most importantly, it gives us the best defense over North America. Wow. Lots of, point of points of tension with the U.S. all of a sudden, Peter McKay. Uh, but interesting. I, I appreciate your insight on all this. We've got to keep talking to them, Don. That's the only way. You got that right. All right. All right, Peter, thank you.